my name is Duration, and this is Think Tech Hawaii, Finding Our Future. And so um, I come on here every two weeks, uh, Wednesday at 1 o'clock, and just talk about something that I'm interested in with somebody in the community that I like. So Justine Espiritu is here. And you interviewed me a few years ago, I think. Yes. So we just it like comes around, around and our outfits are flipped. <laughs> like we're literally wearing like the same colors are flipped. It's so funny. Um, but yeah, so if you could just introduce introduce yourself to whoever's watching, and then we can go from there. Yeah. Again, I'm Justine Spiritu. I recently uh, was with Bikeshare Hawaii, who launched the uh, Bikeshare system, Beaky, for a couple years. I've also dabbled in some local food and, and farm stuff. I was uh, with Oahu Fresh. And uh, the heart of my work is my book club. I co-founded the Greener Reader with uh, <laughs> Marguerite Hardin through yeah. the RISE uh, internship um, I had through Kupu a couple years ago. And so today, I feel like everything kind of comes full circle and is kind of interconnected. And so we were going to talk about, you know, taking initiative in your career and job opportunities, mm -hmm. as well as how you choose to engage in the community, being creative and trying to build uh, connections and trying to kind of forge your own future and those yeah. ideas of opportunity and pathways and stuff. Totally. So I think framing it as like problem solution. So the problem, I think we could identify as people, most people hate their jobs, first of all, <laughs> or they do it like just for money. Yeah. And or, then particularly in Hawaii with a, with a high cost of living, yep. um, people feel like they need the, that, that, that sense of security is sometimes first, first priority for right. sure. And then in kind of the world we're living in, you know, some people want to find meaningful work that contributes to solving like the larger problems that we're facing in society, the world right. in general. Mm -hmm. So trying to find that balance can be frustrating. And then you're like, what's the point of anything? Yeah. <laughs> I'm making money, but I hate my job. It costs so much to live here. How do you balance priorities? Yeah. It can be. And be happy and like be happy in the work that you do and like feel like you're a positive part of society. And I think. I'm glad you asked us to talk about that because I think we both have some kind of experience in forging that path. And I think everyone young has been on both sides. Like mm -hmm. we probably all worked jobs that weren't fulfilling, restaurant jobs, whatever, kind of like first entering the workforce. But then, you know, there's a way that you can like find that. So what was an example of that for you where you were able to find a job that or create a job that you loved? So yeah, probably my biggest example was working with Bike Share Hawaii and the Beaky system because that was a really a, a startup. Um, you know, I was part of the the community that kind of that brainstormed this idea as a solution to clean transportation and and our um, energy issues. And so it was part of there was a really small team to start. It was Ben and Lori and the board. Mm -hmm. And as they were kind of doing the planning, doing the kind of the community outreach, I was able to finagle my way in there as a grant writer, <laughs> uh, which was cool. Able uh -huh. to kind of get some of their initial, some small grants to help with outreach, to help with some equipment pur purchasing. And what I, f I found, and again, that was a, an opportunity I got through um, the RISE internship program, some of the, the clean energy and clean transportation projects mm -hmm. I had kind of put me in that network for sure. But it was what I've kind of realized looking back at, it really took some initiative to mm -hmm. not only just accept um, what they had kind of hired me to do, like just simple grant writing, but then I, I took a lot of initiative and through what I see as like mentorship under the leadership to kind of take on more roles and really do what I else I was interested in within the organization mm -hmm. and within the work. Mm -hmm. And through that kind of creativity and proving myself when they had the funding, we were they were able to create a position for me to come on full time. And over time I was able to establish that into ultimately the an associate director of programs and community partnerships. Yeah. Which again is what I found was was really important and really meaningful stuff and, and getting to work not only in the transportation or the bike community crossing those other boundaries into public health, into housing issues, right. into et cetera, cost of living. And, and I'm just really excited that I had the naive confidence that I could, you know, do that. And I think what I've kind of learned is part of what gets people that are able to achieve that is, is definitely a mentorship and then a support system and mm -hmm. the network that, that 
helps people gain that confidence. Yeah. Which has, so I've kind of recognized, I think there's mentorship in a ton of different forms in Hawaii in particular, mm -hmm. which is interesting to kind of break down and see and recognize. And so I've been really excited about that. And then it's interesting to see that in other forms. Yeah. I think, yeah, one of the keys is like fearlessness and like offering yourself up. Like, hey, I want to help. And like, I just, you know, like, let me help you. And then they'll be like, okay, sure. And then once you start like really inserting yourself somewhere, like you choose an organization or company that you really want to be with mm -hmm. and you offer yourself, even if it's for a smaller role or smaller pay or no pay. And then, yeah, through them investing in you and you investing in them and like proving yourself, then they'll want you on their team. Mm -hmm. I think that's like an easy way to hack. The system, like I did that at a preschool. I was like, I really want to work at this preschool and like I don't want to like be a teacher. I just like really want to work here. I really like it. Right. And they were like, we have a rule. You can't work at the preschool unless you're in ed education, like you have an education major. And I was like, I just want to work here. I'll like volunteer if I have to. I went like three or four times to the office and like bothered them over email. And finally, persistence. The last persistence time, for sure. <laughs> she was like, it's because of your persistence, like slightly annoyed, but mostly impressed. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, you can work for us and we'll, we'll give you an exception. And it was like, you know, I got paid 10 bucks an hour. It was like nothing, but I loved it. I just like knew I would love working with kids. And it was right across the street from when I was a student. So I think persistence is part of it because that was when I didn't have a community. Mm -hmm. But I chose the place that I wanted to be. And I like, you know, kind of forced them to like work with me and like showed mm -hmm. that I was like really committed to being there, even if they kind of said no at first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's always exciting then you kind of think back like how did I get that persistence or like what gave me that confidence to just kind of insert myself into yeah uh, something which is always that you know? is yeah. yeah so I wonder what do you think that was for you or like where do you think you got that because it's kind of like a personality or a again yeah thing. I think that's where the the mentorship piece and your network kind of come yeah. in I think it it took someone telling me that like asking me the questions of what do you want to be doing? Like, what do you find joy in? Where do you think you're, you're not, not even necessarily the, the, like, what do you think your skills are, but help asking me the questions to help me articulate yeah. what I wanted to do. And then mm -hmm. when I was confident in that, then I could, I think the idea of like selling yourself to an organization to have right. that, that confidence. And I think sometimes it, it does take an outer figure sometimes. Yeah. Like, it's nice to know I, I gained a lot more confidence in myself when I knew other people had confidence in me. Yeah. Is, that's, I feel like, where my self confidence is. Exactly. Kind of yeah. So, grew. confidence is key. <laughs> yeah. Come back to that. And I think um, probably like the way you're raised, too, I'm guessing, was a part of it. Like, would you say that was? Yeah. A I would say, I mean, thinking back of my greatest resource, of course, I, like my parents had the financial means to help me go through college. But they also yeah. were a little bit. It was a little bit of a dictatorship of like, I didn't have a choice to go to college. <laughs> so, I mean, them having that experience of where college gets some, where like home yeah. ownership gets some, specifically college was you're going to college, you can go wherever you want, but you're going to college, you're signing this loan. I, sometimes I was like, when I was in undergrad and thinking about my loans, I'm like, they didn't really ask me if I wanted to have this debt, but they knew like yeah. education was the, uh, the pathway mm -hmm. to um, jobs and resources. And again, the specific internship that I did have through the Kupu program, which yeah. was the RISE, mm -hmm. a little bit different than their conservation um, internship programs, but the RISE program was specific to college students or right. people recently out of college. So yeah. recognizing that privilege to that pathway, I think is important. So. Yeah, totally. I had the same experience in college going through the RISE program and I would say like college is like the best opportunity for you to like launch into something because there's so many experts and professionals and academics right. in every field and so that's your opportunity to, to like find your mentors like I like you don't even need to go to class you just need to like <laughs> use your status as a college student Do to like me Doray did not as she says <laughs> go to class everybody <laughs> like you should go to class but but like a lot of my energy in college was spent like as a volunteer like running the student club and mm -hmm. like Meeting with my professors. Again, and like, well, that's where I, I, yeah, I think meeting with your professors, recognizing what resources exist in yeah. your university, because I think that's one thing to get into college, and then again, to be in college and recognize and take advantage of your resources. And again, for me, yeah, exactly. what helped me take advantage of my resources was a professor mm -hmm. seeing these opportunities and telling people, 
hey, do you guys want to travel? You want to go to Geneva? You want to go to this UN mm -hmm. conference? Apply. You can get funding from Chaminade, and totally. then you can get paid for it. So like, what? So again, it was that someone that's you know more knowledgeable, more experienced. I yeah. think making sure a younger generation knows what their resources are. Yeah, totally. Is, like is they're key. like the bridge from expertise, money, like the mm -hmm. access to all of these other pathways, and then mm -hmm. they'll give that to you if you become like. Point if you take, again, it's like if you take the initiative, I yeah. think, to seek those people out right. or to take advantage of those opportunities when they get presented. You know, some people, I think, in college, they're like, I don't want to go to my professor's office hours. You know, I don't want to have a relationship with my professor. Totally, and yeah. those are people that then miss out on those resources. Yeah, because so yeah, like you can graduate college and be like, have all the, this experience under your belt and in your resume already, mm -hmm. even if you weren't paid for any of them, and you'll get that job. Because right. most college students graduate and they weren't involved, they didn't get any experience, so yeah. you graduate at the same level as like 90% of other college students, and then mm. you're like, it's a loss. Yeah, you so know? again, that it's, it's that mix. It's not just um, your upbringing and the resources, but again, having that initiative and having that yeah. drive to you know, contribute or right. be a part of your community. Yeah. Why not? Exactly, and I think just like showing up to things that you're interested in, yeah, and then showing like up, asking like, questions, and mm -hmm. just like offering yourself. Like if you offer your time, people will respect you. They'll be like, "Wow, oh, she's so generous! Like she wants to help." And then when when funding becomes available, they're like, "We have a job for you," and you're like, "Yeah, no way. exactly." You're like what? Yeah, that's you don't awesome. even accept yeah, it. So like, again, so I think that's another thing that you tapped onto is that that commitment and consistency. Yeah, I think is really important too. When you're showing up, when you are putting your own resources and time. Yeah, totally. Um, and then you kind of can build that community, which is how the little segue into the book club and what I'm also interested yeah. too of you with your the good food movement, you mm -hmm. know? I think people are drawn to you and that organization because they know this is something you're doing out of passion. I don't think you're, maybe you're getting paid for it now. No. I hope not you're at like all. vegan <laughs> sponsored. Like, We're not losing money anymore. <laughs> but I mean just that time commitment, you know, I think people really yeah. respect that. Yeah, yeah, and like Good for Movement for me was, it was like I'm doing all these things I love, like I work for environmental organizations and it's amazing and we get to like impact, positively impact our society and our local community, but I knew like I wanted to work in food, you know, and I, mm -hmm. I love connecting people to food and like, you know, information and in inspiration around how food choice can like save the planet and like right. make well, that's you That's what's help, cool too, when you're super committed into your cause of volunteering for all these um, environmental organizations. Yeah. And then you you find what your kind of niche is in that. You know, right. I know, yeah, food choice and diet is a huge factor in our environmental issue. And so right. it's awesome then when you find that thing and then you can focus your energy on that. And then again, having the confidence to, and the initiative to create your own opportunity at that, which you, which you did with the Good Food Movement. Yeah, and it's cool because like so now we're awesome. at like 1,100 followers on Instagram, which is like in some ways it's like to us it's like, wow, it's a lot because we, you know, yeah. we do things only when we really have time. Um, and we always like have this running joke because it's me and my three best friends. We're like, you know, people were like, it's working. We just made stuff up and it's working. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, always, like, you're always surprised you just at what you, what you do. Yeah, I think you, and I think sometimes when you reflect back on it, you're like, how did I have the nerve to do that? Totally. You know? It's like, and then you never, you never really set out to do what ends up happening. Like, you know, the having however many followers and having these many people pay attention. That like probably wasn't necessarily on your mind when you started. It was just like me and my best friends. We care about this. We're interested in getting we together, and talking it. about it, doing it. You know, exactly. And yeah. then what's cool is when that resonates with other people in your community. And yeah, and that's what's cool, too, when you realize you have such a bigger community than you imagine and, and so many more. Uh, such a wider network than you thought, or people that you align with, which yeah, is really cool. Yeah, exactly. So is, can you share, we're going to go to break soon, but can you share a greener reader, like yeah. an overview yeah, yeah, first? Yeah, yeah. So it all, it all comes full circle again. <laughs> um, my, I started the book club with Marguerite Hardin, who was the director of my RISE internship program. And they had a, an original vision for it of the interns kind of going out. Yeah. That didn't happen. Now I like took it over. So I just, <laughs> I just redid our, our thing. So let me, let me read it to you. So, oh God, go back. <laughs> so greening our oh sorry I did change it gathering I edit it <laughs> gathering our minds one book at a time Gomo Bat is our motto so the greener reader is a conscious raising book club focused on reading and discussing texts and sometimes films 
that intersect with the topics of sustainability, place, cli-fi, and other potential futures, democracy and civil engagement, environmental ethic, history from the perspective of food and other underrepresented perspectives, contested narratives, and the unspoken complexities of the human heart. We meet almost always on the last Tuesday of every month <laughs> to read together in silent solidarity, share what we're reading, and discuss the book of the month. One to three times a month, we gather in public green spaces to read as well. So it's still green to reader. There's that relevancy there. It started so, out as specifically sustainability focused, right. but kind of like. But you off. sit on grass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep in the green. Keep in the green. But that's my new, my new little blurb for it. So I like that. What is cli-fi? Climate fiction. That's what I kind of so thought. So it's like sci-fi with the climate crisis <gasps> lens, which is. What's awesome. an example of a cli-fi book? Um, what did we, uh, <laughs> but Oryx, Oryx and Crake, mm -hmm. uh, Margaret Atwood kind of has that theme through, through that. Yeah. Um, we read Lagoon, which again is kind of like the climate crisis and impact in Nigeria and how the town is kind of, um, responding to that. And, yeah. Uh, there's like a million others. Oh, wow. That's good to know. Yeah. That's good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> okay, cool. We're going to go to break. And then we'll just talk about tons of other stuff. When awesome. we get back. <laughs> Thanks to our Think Tech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Monley and the Friends of Think Tech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Hi, so you're watching Think Tech Hawaii, and the show is Finding Our Future. So I'm here with Justine Spirit 2, and we are talking about her book club, Consciousness Raising Book Club, and how to create your own job, and kind of be like an empowered citizen and not so much like passive trying to make money, make a paycheck, but more like being Definitely engaged. Definitely make money. You gotta make money, but trying the best we can yeah. to do it in a way that keeps us happy yeah. and using our creative muscles. To do that, exactly. Yeah. So where are you at in your career? Just so... I'm at a better description of cli-fi. <laughs> so what I want to say, okay. going back to the okay. cli-fi. We'll talk about cli-fi. So also, Sci-fi, which I, which is, I'm happy that my book club opened my heart to, because I was always a little bit overwhelmed with the idea of sci-fi. But what I think is cool about uh, sci-fi and fiction in general, specifically sci-fi genres, for us, you know, when we talk about solutions mm -hmm. to climate issue and and environmental issues in general, we're very much, I think, confined yeah. by what we imagine is possible. Mm -hmm. And so, kind of like the sci-fi realm is a way for us to step out of the present construct mm -hmm. and kind of think creatively and oh, when yeah. there these books are like climate focused then it helps us kind of open our minds to other ideas and and right. then just how we might like react and if we don't want to react this way then it's like let's think about the structures that, that we have in place but a good one that i really liked was the the water knife that was one of wen's yeah. picks a couple years ago and so talking about imagining a world when water is such a finite resource and people start get nasty and start killing each other and like the kind of gangs and stuff that form around that. Yeah. It's so, like climate dystopian. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So that's a that's a that's a category we have. That's cool. Yeah. So how many people are involved right now in the book club? I mean every month we have anywhere between like five and fifteen people show up. Yeah. I have about like two hundred and twenty on mm -hmm. my monthly newsletter. Mm -hmm. Um, not all of them live in Hawaii, but they're just interested in my newsletter. <laughs> but um, it's cool. I tried to kind of like crowdsource the, the ideas. We get together every December to make the list for the year. Mm -hmm. And what I've, and how it's kind of evolved too is, you know, trying to be democratic about 
the book selection. Mm -hmm. And so I have, so I have friends that have different particular interests, but then kind of fall into those 525 categories I listed that yeah. we read. <laughs> so, you know, I have my friends that are really interested in Hawaiian history and mm -hmm. Hawaiian culture. I have uh, my friends that are really interested in like indigenous perspectives. Right. Um, other friends that are interested in um, um, other things. Lots uh, of things. Lots of yes. things. <laughs> well, you guys do like a lot of cool books. Yeah. I'm always like, that sounds like a really good book. So another way of that, what I've been trying to do, because I also, what I kind of noticed though, it's like a lot of the most committed people are my close group of friends. Yeah. Which has been fun in the sense of getting to know them on another level of yeah. how, what they like to read about and what, and then it, People say they like coming to book club because it's conversations that aren't just about relationships or <laughs> complaining about your job. You know, it's this like centered topic. And so it's been really cool to hear yeah. that, that people say they can come to this and have a more lively conversation. Yeah. So but one so that idea, though, of like reading just with your close network of friends, of like, how is that like expanding our minds at all? Yeah. So my new kind of vision I've been enacting is trying to hook up with other kind of themed book clubs yeah and basically going to their book club meeting so planning to have to attend one of their book, book club meetings so it's like jumping into another club and another network and yeah. other people that i don't necessarily know so it was cool right. we did that this year mm -hmm. with the slow food oahu book club oh, I didn't so know they, they had, had yeah they had a partnership with the shop yeah. so they picked four different books for 2019 uh -huh. and that's how we ended up we read hippie food last uh, last month yeah so we kind of crashed their book club and got to just meet new people have these maybe even some similar conversations that we've had amongst each other but mm -hmm. it was a cool way to meet new people this for 2020, I'm going to do that with the Civil Beat Book Club. Oh, cool. So Civil Beat. Wow, there's a lot of cool book clubs. Exactly. No that was the thing. There's like these book clubs you exist. Join forces. Yes. I really, I, and I did. Um, Have like a book club coalition. That is what I was doing. Me and Emily. <laughs> it was like, I think in March. No, maybe it was last November. We did like a book club social at the shop. Emily helped me coordinate this where we invited Bunch different of nerds. book clubs. Yeah, super. Bunch of cool nerds. Yeah, cool nerds. Cool notes. <laughs> uh, but that was cool, you know. So we were only able to connect with Slow Food that one. Then I just heard through the grapevine, Civil Beat was doing theirs. I emailed yeah. uh, the woman that has the book I'm going to do. She hasn't emailed me back yet. No big deal. I'm just going to show up with my book club. Just persist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that persistence again of like, yeah. I want this partnership to happen. Uh, and it's cool if you build a partnership in a way where they don't necessarily have to consent. Like, I'm just going to show up. Let's open the public. Yeah, totally. Anyways. But yeah, so that's exciting to then, mm -hmm. it's been my little passion project of like how I can try to keep learning and keep kind of meeting new people right. and meeting new perspectives. I've always also on the <laughs> Hawaii angle, mm -hmm. I've been able to connect with Naumea a couple of times through different projects on like parking day. They've come and brought books and I've had a vision of kind of them, you know, at least just picking a book yeah. uh, again to have that someone that has that kind of tie to Hawaiian culture and Hawaiian right. history and having mm -hmm. them kind of, not necessarily, I don't want to put that on to facilitate it, but to have a book selected by them is yeah, cool. Totally. So just trying to mix it up. Yeah. Okay. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about, well, two things were like mentorship, we kind of covered in community, like the social capital that's required to be like successful and connect, like well connected, which in some ways is like, you know, that's the best pathway to any form of wealth is through people. And those connections and i feel like we're both kind of the types that are like we can go to an event and we know like lots of different people out there and like we have that kind of like network mm -hmm. um in our local community so i'm wondering what you would recommend to somebody who's like looking for that network or trying to expand in terms of like outside their friend group just be like more connected yeah i mean i think it's what you said earlier i think showing up and like taking the time to go to an event that you're interested, whether or not your friends are willing to go with you, whether or not you know you, if you're going to know anyone there or not, just kind of looking at what you're interested in mm -hmm. and having that courage to just show up even by yourself. Yes. Yeah. Is, is, I think, uh, and it's almost like maybe it's even better to show up by yourself because then you don't rely on just your hanging friends. out with your friends. You're yeah. forced to, like, kind of go and, and talk to others. And there's so many cool things. You know, I'm always, like, drawn to the book thing, so looking at the events at the shop and... Mm -hmm um parking day and whatnot but look, volunteering doing the beach cleanup routes that you know yeah, surf totally. rider sustainable coastlines but again and then it's like if if what you're interested doesn't exist create it yourself yeah totally. that's what i was like i don't really 
like facilitating a book club, but I was like, there was no book club, so I had to do it. You just had to. Had that's to how it is. Yeah. That's how Food Good Food Movement. I was like, we went to all these vegetarian society events, and, mm-hmm. and it's they just, like, just weren't like, like I wasn't like feeling super excited after. Like, they're cool events, great speakers. Um, so we were like, let's create like a, you know, it's almost the same thing, but like it'll be like targeted to like a millennial audience, and we're gonna make it like really inspiring and fun, and like yeah. have really great food. And so we like filled this niche that we felt like was needed and was exciting for us. So yeah. people can find like that alignment. Yeah. That's key. Yeah, and so I think those two ends of the spectrum of one being willing to totally jump into, you like finding something that already exists and jump into it. Yeah, and it's, I think on the other end of what we were just talking about is, is just doing what you want mm-hmm. and then letting that network come, come to, to you. you. And I think what's That's key to true. that, what I know the difference for me of having the confidence to do something is if I have like one partner that is like, okay, yeah, let's do this together. Partner and crime. Like, then I'm like hundred percent committed. And it's always like, even if it's just two of us in book club, let's do the book club. You, you have know? to, cause if it's yeah. just you, it's like doing yoga by yourself. Like if I do, I'm like, okay, that was 10 minutes. But if I go to a class, like I'll always stay for the hour, hour and a half. So it's like really, you need that accountability. Yeah. Yeah. The and then, and then with. being, and being okay with that too. Cause I yeah. feel like so many people want to start things, but they're so afraid of what if no one comes? What if no one cares? And it's like, well, if you have one person that's committed to caring with you then, and then being like two people every time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's what I, that's what I tell myself. You just gotta have like one partner in crime. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like finding yeah. a friend or somebody you know you can work with that you know like will keep hyping you up and be stuck on stuff. Yeah, which again kind of goes back to that mentorship link or just the the support network of yeah someone helping build your confidence and that you're willing to have like you know you'll have a good time with. You so we have shows up. We have one minute. So can you share a mentor example that you have that you've been really thankful for? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, I always fall back on uh, Ben Trevino. Uh, he was the, the first president of Bike Share Hawaii, and I feel like really took me under his wing and really, like, asked me questions to think about what I, I wanted to do and has, and has continued to be a support system long after we don't work together anymore. Right. And I just, he's a person I know I can share ideas with and that he'll always be there to support me. Feels good inside. Oh yeah, it's like friends. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is my friend. Yeah, friend who's my mentor. I have like ten or fifteen mentors. Yeah, now. yeah. You don't have like, to be learned to one. Older and more experienced than me. And now I yeah. have people that I mentor, like high school students that are activists, and um, just keeping that cycle going is so important. And making sure you're like passing it on yeah. and like yeah. always Again, open to learn. Being open, that you know, recognizing who, what, what resources you had, and then doing what you can to share those with others. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that was our show. It was super fun, and I always love talking to you. So thank you for coming on, and maybe we can do it again sometime. Yeah, let's do it every year. Okay, (laughs) once a year. Thanks, everyone. So every other Wednesday, Think Tech Hawaii, Finding Our Future, talking about lots of solutions to our community and global problems. So it's a lot of fun. Thank you. 